This is Dan Abbott, teach at Southern Maine Community College. This is lecture four in the series of video lectures for AEDD 260, the CAD management class at Southern Maine Community College. Today, what we're going to be talking about is ACAD.pgp. It's a specific file in AutoCAD that defines both aliases and external commands. It is um, a fairly straightforward form of programming and it allows you to define nicknames or aliases for any AutoCAD command but more importantly in some ways is that it allows you to define external commands in AutoCAD as well commands that you can type at the AutoCAD command line and um, could even assign them by the way to menu toolbars and other kinds of menu items that are that use buttons um, and then just issue an external command directly from the AutoCAD command prompt whenever you want to so first Make sure you know what the command is, what the uh, file is called. The name of the file is acad.pgp, program parameters. Been around since the beginning of AutoCAD. I guess I should make that a little bigger. We've been around since the beginning of AutoCAD. This file is a text file, and it, as I said, defines both aliases and external commands. First point is where is it? Well, it's in the support folder. If you go to the options tool, or the options dialog box in AutoCAD and you go under files and you look at the support path oh, I've got puzzles at the top of my support path here and I'm going to set a different profile current because I don't want pro I don't want puzzlers for this particular purpose so the first place um, that AutoCAD looks for any kind of file that it needs it's in a support directory is under users in my case DAM that's the um, current username or the login name App data, application data, roaming, Autodesk, AutoCAD 2021, R24.0, ENU, and then support. That's where it's looking. Now, it is possible that there are more than one ACAD.pgp files that might be in various places. And so what happens is this when AutoCAD's looking for information that it needs, the first place it looks is the first item on this support path, the one at the top. So that's where it's going to go to look. If it can't find it there, it goes to the next item in the path. If it can't find it there, it goes to the next item and it goes down through. So one of the things you need to know is where is the file and which file or which support um, path is it using. There's a tool in AutoList for doing that and I'm going to just type in a couple of pieces of AutoList code at the command line. The first one is find file. And what I've done here is put some AutoLisp code, and that starts with an open parenthesis and ends with an open parenthesis. Find file is a Lisp function. It'll search the current search path in AutoCAD and look for that file. The first one it finds is the one that it's going to open. I shouldn't say open. It's the one it's going to list. So now I can see that there is, in fact, an ACAD.pgp file right here located in that first location, the support folder under my name. The reason you're seeing double backslashes is because in auto lisp, and that is an auto lisp, well, it's, a, it's basically a report out. It's a response to what I typed up here. In auto lisp, you cannot use a single backslash to separate directory names. You have to use either a single front slash or a double backslash. Now, if I want to open that, I can use another lisp function, which is start app. Start app is similar to the start function in DOS in the sense that if you give the name of an existing Windows program, it'll start that application in quotation marks. So I want to start Notepad so I can see what we're doing. And I want to start op Notepad and open find file acad.pgp two parentheses because they have to close the opening parentheses. When I type enter now, it opens up notepad and it opens it up with that file. This is a file we're going to edit. Now when you edit this file, we'll look at the beginning in a minute, when you edit this file I want you to go all the way to the end. Right down here the last line is a series of stars and dashes and then no x late, do not remove. Everything you do in this file has to be put below that line so that when you submit it and I open it up, I can look directly at the end and see where you've made your changes. 
do not make any changes to this file up in the file itself. Anything you add at the end of this file is going to take precedence over anything that happens earlier. So, for instance, if the letter C was defined to stand um, for circle earlier, and it is, earlier in this uh, file, and you decide the letter C should stand for copy, whatever you put here will be the last item that it sees, and that'll be what the definition for the letter C will be. I'm going to go to the top. At the top, there's some header material, and one of the things about this file you'll, you'll see is that a semicolon acts as a comment. In other words, if you put a semicolon in front of a line, AutoCAD doesn't um, evaluate that line. It just ignores it. And that's true of all programming uh, languages, that there's some way of indicating to the programming language not to pay attention to a specific line. In DOS, it's REM. stands for remark. If you put REM at the beginning of a line, space and then a line, DOS um, or the operating system will ignore that line when it goes and it reads that batch file. Likewise, in autolist programming, a semicolon, and uh, as well in script languages, a semicolon will be um, interpreted by AutoCAD as don't pay attention to this line, just ignore it. So this just tells you what the name of the file is. It's a program parameters file, external commands and command alias definitions, you know, what, what the terms of use are, some things like that. Now, it also explains what happens with external commands. And it's telling you that while you're using AutoCAD, while you're still in that command, you can shell out of AutoCAD from the command prompt and do something else with a program other than AutoCAD without actually leaving AutoCAD. And its description of that is you can invoke other programs or utilities. In other words, you can make them run. Okay, so it's going to tell you down below how you do that, and we're going to look at that in just a minute. Command aliases are those little nicknames like the letter L is not a command in AutoCAD. Line, L-I-N-E, is the name of a command. L is an alias or nickname for the line command. You can create any alias you want. Um, when I first started using AutoCAD, I would mistype the word change, which was something you had to use in order to change properties at the time. And I would type it Chagney so often that I finally defined Chagney as an alias for change so that my misspellings could get overlooked as I was typing. I don't do that anymore, but that's how I started off with the ACAD PGP file. Gives you a recommendation that you back up the file before editing it. I don't think that's necessary. Um, got to, it's always a good idea to back up your files, but you can always get it back. Um, as long as you put everything at the end of the file, there's not much you can do that's going to cause a problem here, because you can just go and delete whatever's at the end if there's a problem that comes up. Now, at the beginning, it talks about external commands, and we'll, well, before I do that, I, will want, I do want to point out one thing. I'm having you do this editing in Notepad or some other text editor, but it has to be a text editor because it's a sort of easy introduction to the notion of writing programs, of writing code. It is possible in AutoCAD to use an express tool called Alias Edit. And that express tool is right there. And command aliases on the uh, ribbon is what shows up. If you open that up, it'll give you a list of all of the aliases in AutoCAD and it'll allow you to add, remove, or edit any one of them. So if we go back to the letter C, on the letter C, right there, coming up, what was C? C stands for circle. You could go and say, I want to edit that. And if you want to edit it, you go in here and type in the C and you give it a different, a different uh, command. That's a kind of nice, easy way to do this. Same thing with external commands. However, for the purpose of this course, I'm using this as my entry into, well, we started with DOS. That's one form of programming. Now, this is my entry into AutoCAD programming. So we're going to start here, then we're going to go to scripts, and we'll go to list programs. So this is something that can be used for external commands, which are known as shell commands, because you shell out or get outside of the shell of AutoCAD into the area where the shell resides. Um, but I don't want you using it for this purpose. So now I'm going to go back to the to Notepad and the ACAD PGP file that we just opened, which is eluding me. There it is. Okay. 
Um, I have my screen uh, image projected at um, a an increase in percentage of 150% so that you can read it a little better. As a result, I don't have icons along the taskbar that show up the way they normally would. So we'll, um, we'll start with external commands because that's what's at the beginning of this file. And what I want to do is go and just show you that you have an explanation here for something called a bit flag. So open that up a little bit. So we have several external commands that are predefined by AutoCAD. And you've seen me use Notepad as an external command. When I press Enter at the command line, it opens up Notepad. Why is that? Because right here, it says if he types Notepad at the command prompt, start, which is the DOS function, start an application, Notepad, the name of the application, and then file to edit one, the some things here um, that we're about to talk about. But file to edit means you could type in a, a file name and now it'll start Notepad and open that file. But you have to type in the path and the file name for that to happen. If you don't, it just starts a new Notepad file with that name. I normally just press Enter and then start typing. Um, two other external programs uh, that, are, that have uh, commands already is Windows Explorer. So type Explorer and it starts Windows Explorer. And PBrush starts the paintbrush, which is a very basic um, editing, graphic editing program in AutoCAD. There are some DOS functions up here that are defined. Delete. If you want to delete a file, you can do it from the AutoCAD command prompt. Directory. We saw that in the section on DOS. DIR gives you a directory, and you can type that in at the AutoCAD command prompt, and then give the name of a folder or name of a uh, of a drive, and it'll give you a directory of that whole drive. SH and shell do the same thing. They just shell out to the AutoCAD, I mean, shell out of AutoCAD to the operating system. Start starts a um, new app, an application if it exists on the computer. And then type gives you a list of uh, files. And it's actually pretty much the same thing as DIR. In fact, I'm not even sure why they have it in there twice. The thing I'm pointing out here is that they have these things called bit flag settings. Bit flag settings are values that control the behavior of something, in this case of the way that the external commands work. And bit flagging uses numbers that are generated by number one, which you then double, to the number two, double that to the number 4, double that to the number 8, double that to 16, to 32, to 64, to 128, to 256, and on and on and on. That's very, very uh, common and very important in AutoCAD and um, in any computer program that, those, that that process is used. So these values represent various kinds of conditions. It says bit flag 1, and that number would be right there. There's an 8 in this case. There's a one right here. So if the bit, and by the way, the reason they're bit flagged is this. You can have more than one of these conditions set. In order to have condition, the first and the second condition set, you add two and one together to get three. And the bit flag system is designed to give you a unique value when you add values together. So if I added eight and four, I'd get, I'd get uh, 12. <laughs> um, and anyway, 12 would mean that I have both of those conditions set. So bits flag set for one says so don't wait for the application to finish, just um, can go right back to AutoCAD and let it do its thing. Bit two, um, run the whole program minimize so that it's not in your way. And then hidden means doesn't show you the result, it's just in the hidden in the background. And then bit flag eight is if you have a, a string that has spaces in it, so you put them in quotes. So it'd be possible for you to want all four of these conditions to be true. Don't wait for it to finish, run it minimized, have it hidden, and have it in quotes, in which case you'd add all those numbers together and get 15, and that would be the value you would put right there. Inexplicably, a very useful bit flag setting is left out of this, and that is a bit flag of zero. And that means wait for the application to finish. Why they don't include that there, I don't know. The reason I know is because it's always been the case. And at one time, the ACAD PGP file 
was how you, this is how you allocated memory back when there was so little memory available on a computer that you had to kind of slice it up and indicate how much of the memory was available for each application. A long time ago. But I knew there was a bit flag of zero, and I used that bit flag for some of the programs I've written to make sure that if I have something that has to continue and end before AutoCAD takes over, it'll do that. Now, if we come down here, this is just a good general approach to writing a program in a language that you're not familiar with. You want another external command. So let's, um, let's come up with one. I want to start Microsoft Word from the AutoCAD command prompt. I look over here and I realize down here there's some programs that do that. And if I come down here and look, the very first field, and there are five fields for external commands, the very first field is what I would type at the AutoCAD command prompt. In a sense, you're creating a new AutoCAD command. So what I would type at the command prompt is explore. Now if I bring that over here, come up to AutoCAD, if I type explore, at the AutoCAD command prompt and then press enter, it opens up the Windows Explorer, the file management uh, system in Windows. It's called File Explorer and that's what opens up. Why? Because, go back and find it, because the word Explorer, when you type it at the AutoCAD command prompt, comma, to delimit that field, executes whatever follows in the next field. In the next field, the DOS function start is executed, and the name of the program, the application Windows Explorer, the name of it, the name of the file, the exe file that fires it off, is explorer.exe. Then you have a comma because the fields here are delimited by commas, and that's, a, that's an important word because there are a number of things we're going to be looking at, including databases and text files that contain data. Delimiting just means you tell the computer whatever type of data is included here ends at the quest at the comma and then goes on to a different type of data. In the first location, no comma to begin with, but in the first location is whatever you would type at the AutoCAD command prompt. In the second field is whatever you want to happen when you type that in. The third field is the bit flag value that determines how um, AutoCAD behaves, and if you take a look at one, don't wait for the application to finish. That means if you type in Explorer and it takes a couple seconds to open, you're still able to use AutoCAD while it's doing that. You'll never notice, by the way, how long it takes because it looks instantaneous. Then you have a comma, then you have a space that you can put a prompt in. And there's a prompt down below for the Notepad version. I'll run that up here and show you that. So if I type Notepad, it opens Notepad. If I want to give it a name, I give it that name, and when it opens, it says we can't find that file that you're trying to open. Do you want to create a new one? I say yes, and now I have Notepad open with an empty file named dan.txt. If I don't type anything, it just opens Notepad untitled, and then I have to give it a title when I save it. Now again, all of this is happening because of the definition right here for Notepad. So in that fourth field, it gives you a prompt that to, to do something. And whatever you do there is going to be returned to whatever happens in the prior field. Not the immediately prior field, that's the one. So in other words, Notepad opens and tries to open that file name that you gave. Then there's another comma, and there's actually a fifth field out here. That fifth field has nothing in it, and it never will, but at one time it did, and as a result, it's still there as what's called a legacy field. It used to be you would put a number in there indicating how much RAM you wanted to set aside for the purpose of conducting or executing that particular external command. Uh, that has not been necessary for decades, really. So it just exists as a kind of artifact like your appendix. But what it tells you is this. If you want to write one of these commands yourself, you want to make sure that you use exactly the same syntax. So if I go here and I copy that whole thing, and then I go all the way to the end of the file, let me open that, let me just make that a little smaller. 
I go all the way to the end of the file, which is where I told you you had to put everything, and down here I have a little header, Dan Abbott, external command. I want you to do that so I know who you are, even though I'm I will know when I open it, but I just want your name on there. Now, I'm going to put this in here. I don't need to duplicate that. I'm just putting it in there so I understand what the format is. And the format is five fields. What I want to type at the command line, what I want to happen, a value of some kind here, a prompt if I need one, a comma, and then nothing. So by putting that down here, I can say, well, I want... Hang on. I'm going to go back to this. Okay, so instead of, all right, let me start that over. I don't want to confuse you. So here we go. So I would say, what do you want to type at the command line to open up Microsoft Word? I think Word probably would do it. So I'm going to have that be my new AutoCAD command. What do I want it to do? I want it to start Word, but um, you need to know what the name of the executable file is that starts Microsoft Word. It isn't as obvious as you might think. It's not Word. And it's not MS Word, which is what I sometimes think it is, because access is MS Access. Instead, it is Win Word. That is the name of the file in Microsoft, in the operating system that starts Microsoft Word. Now, <clears throat> one, that's what it had for everything else, so what the heck, we'll just leave it. And unless you're doing something that really requires a lot of time and you don't want AutoCAD to go back to AutoCAD until it's done, you would leave that set to 1. The only time you're going to change that likely is if you wanted to have an external command that required that you have spaces with quotes around things that have spaces in the names in the second field. If you want a prompt, file to edit, so you could put in a file name and it opens up, do it, and then you're going to do that. Now, I'm going to check and see if this works. To see if that works, I need to save this file. I don't need to get out of this program, out of this file. I just need to save it. So again, just go up here, I'd Control S, or just pick Save. It'll save it. Now I go back to AutoCAD. Now, if you forget to do the next step and just go back and type Word. It's going to say, hmm, draw order, because Word is part of the command draw order, and that's all that it knows. It doesn't know that you have defined a new command called Word, and it doesn't know that because AutoCAD reads the ACAD PGP file when you first start AutoCAD, and then it reads it every time you open a new drawing. What we need to do is reinitialize that file. And you do it by typing reinit. You press enter, and there is only one choice anymore. One time there were other things you could reinitialize, and you could, in fact, still have a digitizer attached. But I don't know anyone who does anymore. So PGP is your only obvious, obvious uh, choice. Pick OK. If you don't get an error message, it means that it loaded it without finding anything wrong. Now if I type Word, I get that prompt, file to edit. Once again, I could give it a name if I want. It opens Microsoft Word, says can't find the file, okay. And when you say you can't find the file in Word, it doesn't give you the option of actually naming it. It just opens it up. So you type stuff, save it, you go from there. So there's really no point in having that prompt in there. So now that I know that, I'm going to go back. And I'm just going to do this. Now, the point I'm making here about syntax is this. You're going to be looking at a lot of things that you've never seen before, and you're going to have to write code that has the right syntax to work in those types of files. And the way to do that is to look at something that you know works and copy the syntax exactly. The easiest way to do that is once you've got one that works, copy it, bring it down here, paste it, and then go and do something else. So, for instance, we might want Excel here. We might want to start the Excel program. I would do that. Now, Excel, the EXE file is actually called Excel. So, that's all we need. That one looks like it works. We do a Control S to save it. Go back to AutoCAD. No known command until we reinitialize the PGP file. 
That's the one we want to reinitialize. Now when I type Excel, it opens up Microsoft Excel. I can go directly to a Excel spreadsheet. Now if I have a specific spreadsheet I want to open, all I have to do is give the name of that spreadsheet. So while I'm working in AutoCAD, if, I, if there are files that I want to use and go back and forth to, all I need to do is go to the PGP file, create those as external commands, and then go from there. Now let's take a look at your textbook. Because, yeah, right there, AutoCAD Secrets. I have the whole book here as a PDF file. You don't have that. I don't even think you can buy it. You have to buy it as a book or as a Kindle um, document. You do not want to buy the Kindle version. It is almost impossible to use because none of the illustrations are linked up in any logical way with the with the text. Um, so if you can find a PDF file that you can purchase, go ahead. Uh, I know that I got this because I wrote the book. But um, I do know there are all kinds of illegal sites that are illegally letting people download books, and you probably can find one. Whether you want to do that or not is up to you. You can get this book fairly inexpensively by buying a used one on one of the sites that sells used books. Now, what I'm going to do is go to the PGP file, and it is... Um, tool palettes, line types, I'm just trying to remember where I put it. It's in chapter two under external commands and command aliases. So we'll go to chapter two. Managing your system, and it is near the end of this chapter. Okay, external commands and command aliases. So if you look at the <coughs> this part of your book, it goes through and it talks about the same things I'm talking about right now. Um, you can type the word start, for instance, and start any um, program at the AutoCAD command prompt, any program that you know the name of the executable file for. So you come down through here, explains how to do it, shows you where the file is located, and also shows you a technique, the one I just gave you, that allows you at the command line to type start app, which is a Lisp function, notepad in quotes, find file, acad.pgp in quotes, and then parentheses, enclosing each of the elements or atoms, A-T-O-M-S. Um, anyway, and it opens something up that looks like this, and it has a little discussion of that as well. Yeah, the zero is a bit flag, so it does in fact tell you that zero is there. So you have all this data someplace. Uh, and it even ha oh, has a little sidebar that talks about bit flagging and how bit flagging works which I think you ought to read. In fact, I think you should read every one of the, um, the little sidebars that show up and, and that are shaded in. I think they're really, really helpful. All right, so now we get down here, and those are the, that's what used to be in the PGP file. I just realized they've gotten rid of catalog. They still have type. They got rid of edit, which is not bad because edit used to refer to a DOS editor that was just horrible. So this is not exactly what yours is going to look like because they've eliminated a couple of things. Anyway, it describes what you're doing here. Now I've got some, and then it shows you about the um, um, aliases. We'll get to that in just a minute. So here are some examples of external commands. So in some of these, I'm just starting a program. Like calculator, for instance. I use the calculator in AutoCAD all the time because I find the actual Windows calculator better than the um, AutoCAD calculator. So we can do that, start calc, and it just opens up, opened up in my other monitor here, so let me bring it over. It just opens up and it looks like that, kind of massive thing. Um, but you can also create a command that'll automatically open that up. So MS access, that's how the access is. Okay, so here's an example though. AU is Autodesk University, and it's a, it's a large computer aided design conference that I used to teach at every year um, until I retired from it, because it was in Las Vegas, and I get really tired of going to Las Vegas every Thanksgiving. It would literally be the week after Thanksgiving, and so I'd have Thanksgiving, and I'd fly to Las Vegas, spend a week, hire someone to take my classes for me, work like crazy out there, come back. I just got tired of it. 
Um, so there are a couple of examples here of things you can do. One is to go to a website. So if you look at iExplore is the name of Windows Explorer. Um, now, so iExplore is Windows Explorer. That's an older web browser. It's been replaced by Edge and Microsoft. The reason it's here in the book is because that was one browser that everyone had if they had Windows. People are more likely to use Chrome or Foxfire now. Or is it Firefox? I'm going to find out in a minute. So you can replace your browser name with that and it'll probably open up. Probably open up. You may have to actually find the location of the .exe file that fires it up. So in order to discover whether or not I can just type in start I explore. Let's see if, let's see if I'm going to check and see. Do I have Chrome on my machine? I do not. We're going to find out in a minute. And do I have Foxfire on my machine? So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to say if I type the word start and then Chrome cannot find it. That probably means I don't have it. Well, I don't because it got, it was causing problems and I uninstalled it. Now I'll type start Foxfire. And it tells me it can't find that. And I think it's probably because it's called Firefox instead. And I'm always getting that wrong. So I'll type this and go Firefox. And it came on my other monitor, but I'll bring it over. It just opened up that window right there. Now, if you know that it's going to open up, now you can go in and you can create all kinds of nifty things. So I'm going to close that out. I'm going to go back to my... I'm going to go back here. This is where I have my external commands now. I made Word. I made Excel. So now I'm going to type in. Um, I'm going to type in my wife's name, and I'm going to say start Firefox, and then www.monicawood.com, comma one, comma comma. Now I'm going to save this file. I'm going to go back to AutoCAD. I'm going to reinitialize the PGP file and see if Monica now opens up my wife's website. And again, it happens on the other page, but it does. That's my wife. She's a writer. She's got a website. I actually created this website so long ago that it was all created with HTML language. I don't recommend it. At any rate, you can open any website you want. Let me close that out. You can open any website you want by putting it into the ACAD PGP file. So that can be very helpful, especially if there's websites that have data that you want to go to on a regular basis or some place where you want to go and look for some things. And all you have to do to make that happen is to know, make sure you know where that website is. So if you go into your web browser, and in your web browser you go and find a website, well, Southern Maine Community College, for instance. That would be a good one to put in there. So I'll go back to I'll go back to this file right here and I'll say I want to have smcc comma start firefox www.smccme.edu comma one comma comma don't forget the comma one comma comma because it has to be there and again if you look at the existing syntax that'll tell you what syntax you want to use for yours now we go back to AutoCAD we initialize once again and now SMCC opens up Southern Maine Community College's website. Um, and any, literally any place you go, you can just copy the URL here and have it open up. So if we, um, let's go to YouTube. Let's say I want to go to YouTube and your videos for this course are going to be in YouTube in Dan Abbott's channel. And they are going to be in the playlist called AEDD260, which is someplace. Oh, right there. So if I say let's view the full playlist, and it goes to that web address right there, and I copy that. Ooh, might be too long. I've never tried this before going so far in. Let's see what's going to work. It'll be fun. So I come back here, and I'd say, all right, I want AEDD. 260, or even I could just put 260, the number of this course, comma, start, Firefox, and then paste that in, comma, one, comma, comma, save the file, get 
out of YouTube to begin with. Get out of that as well. In fact, I'm just going to close Firefox altogether. Go back to AutoCAD, reinitialize that file, the PGP file, and then type 260. And bingo, there you are. AEDD 260 SMCC CAD management. Then you can go down through and you can see I've got a welcome video, I've got lecture one, lecture two, lecture three, lecture four, etc., all the way down through. That would not be a bad um, way to use this, to tell you the truth. I think that would be kind of nice. So, what else can you do here, though? Well, the other thing you can do is go and open up a file on an existing computer. So, I could, for instance, let's say I wanted to uh, open up, we have a PDF file that is a, the CAD graphics standards for um, our department. So, let's just say I want to have e AEDD represent the CAD standards. Well, the first thing I need to know is where is it? So what I'm going to do is go look for it. I'm going to go to AutoCAD and type Explorer. So I open up Windows Explorer and then I'm going to go and find that file. That file is on a letter, drive letter called H, which is my Google Stream. I don't know for sure that I can use that here, but I think I can. We're going to find out. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to go and find the file and it will be right there, Technical Graphics Standards Revision 10. That's the file I want to open up. So it is an H, my drive, our drive student. I'll go back. You notice I'm doing a lot of copying and pasting just to avoid making a mistake. So I'll just say, in fact, I'm going to just put the, the name of the file itself. Um, that would work, but let's uh, let's start Explorer anyway, and then do this. Start Explorer. Okay, now I need the name of the file. I'll go back and make sure that I copy that as well, because I want to make sure that I don't misspell anything. So I just hover over it, get the whole thing in here, copy it, go back to that file, Paste that in, comma one, comma, comma. Save this. Go back to AutoCAD. Reinit. No error message. Looks pretty good. AEDD opens up the Technical Graphics Standards Manual. Anyway, I think that's enough external commands to give you an idea. And you're going to have to create your own for your PGP file. And I've got some specific requirements for that on Brightspace. But I think that's probably enough um, examples to give you a pretty good idea of some of the power you have with those external commands. Now let's go back to the textbook, which is right. Did I close it out? I must have closed it. Okay, well, I'm going to go here um, and go back to the top, then I'll get the textbook. At the top of this file, it talk, talked about external commands, and those are the first commands that it gave you examples of. Now we have aliases. And again, they go through and they tell you some of the things you should do. And it goes, it should reduce a command by at least two characters. You do anything you want. You can type my favorite command in the whole wide world as an alias for the line command if you want. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you want to have an alias, though, that brings up the command line version of a command, you do have to put that negative sign in front of it. it calls it a hyphen here. Um, and uh, But either one, it's the same thing. So anyway, so now we look at the syntax of that. And the very first one, 3A, brings up the 3D array command. Or maybe we should find one you might be more familiar with, which is L for line, which is probably the first alias you ever used. So why does L stand for line? Because of the ACAD PGP file. So the letter L stands for line. So what do you have? Again, in the first field, just like with external commands, what would you type at the AutoCAD command prompt to make this happen? A comma to delimitate the field. But unlike the external commands that have five fields, there's only two when you're using an alias. And in order to make it clear to AutoCAD that you're not using an external command, you have to use an actual command name preceded by an asterisk. The asterisk is the, sim is the sign 
or the clue to AutoCAD that it's about to see a command name. <clears throat> Whatever you put here has to be a command name. It cannot be an alias. So these are the actual commands in AutoCAD. So you're going to end up making some new commands here. And there are an awful lot of aliases already. By the way, you notice that they violated their rule here about reducing the command by at least two characters right here because they thought people might want to just type in remove control point because they remember that at any rate. Um, so if you get on through here, there are an awful lot of choices, awful lot of examples here. Um, <laughs> these are old, older commands that you know really mimic what happened in earlier release. Yeah, release 13, that wasn't 2013, release 13, that would have been 1990, uh, sometime in 1990, middle 1990s. So, those are aliases, these are some discontinued aliases, and so they say, well, we, don't, we no longer have a DDL modes, instead we have the layer command, therefore we're going to redefine DDL modes as layer, in case any old school users are still typing DDL modes, which used to stand for dynamic dialog box, linear uh, layer mode. Anyway, some other can discontinued. Most of these have no value to you at all. So now you come down here and you're going to have Dan's um, aliases or Dan Abbott. Put the whole thing in there. Be more formal. Aliases. Alright. So go back to the book and take a look at yeah, long path statements. This is something to keep in mind. Um, <laughs> sometimes the path is longer than, I forget exactly what the limit, I think it's 200 characters or something like that. But some students have tried to put a, oops, just bumped into that, that. Um, tried to put a path that was too long and as a result had to reduce the length. And one way to reduce the length of a path to a specific document is to revert to the 8.3 layer naming, I uh, mean, uh, folder and, and file naming convention. And that's using the tilde 1, tilde 2, tilde 3. That's discussed uh, elsewhere in your book, but it does tell you what's going on with that. So now, as far as aliases go, here's a few examples of aliases you might want to consider. Um, and in each of these cases, it's just two fields. And then I actually talked about how I used to type Chagney instead of change and made that an alias as well. Um, what I want you to do on this is to go through and look at every single command in that list just to kind of remind yourself of the things about AutoCAD that you actually might no longer know. And in some cases never did. And if you take a look, there are a lot of commands in AutoCAD. Now some of them are 3D commands, some of them are things you're not likely to use directly. But at the very least, just scan down through here and ask yourself if these are familiar, if you understand how they work. And again, these are all specific commands at the command line. Now, once you are done doing that, make a decision about what you think would be better aliases. So, for instance, if I go to AutoCAD, and by the way, try these out in AutoCAD before you create them here. Let's just say I'm tired of typing reinit. Wouldn't RI be a nice alias? Well, it is an alias. It's an alias for ribbon, which it turns the ribbon on and off. Since you're unlikely to do that for real, um, go back to the ACAD PGP file and then down here say I want RI to stand for star reinit. Now, I'm going to know only one comma, there's only two fields. I'll save that, control S. I'll reinit, and again, I won't know about it until I reinit. So reinit, RI, reinit. Now you don't have to type reinit anymore. So anything you find yourself typing often, consider making an alias for that. Um, there's the AutoCAD calculator command. And that calculator command comes up and asks you for an expression. The time you want, most want to use it is you'd want to use it transparently. So let's try something else. We don't know this is going to work. Actually, I don't know this is going to work. I'm going to go back to the PGP file and I'm going to say, let's see, let's use the letter K as what I want to type at the command line and see if it'll issue a command transparently. So I've got the asterisk indicating a command is coming. I've got apostrophe, which is how you issue a transparent command, and then CAL. We'll save that, come back out, RI. If 
file. Now let's just say I'm in the offset command and I want to use cal transparently. Can I type the letter K and press enter? No. How about can I type apostrophe K and press enter? The answer is no. Um, I didn't think that would work, but I hadn't tried it before, so I thought I would. But that's what you do when you're trying things out. You just try something, see if it works. If it doesn't work, and then you can move on. So we can have K represent Cal, I believe. We'll find that out, too. I think Cal is the name of a command. Let's find out. So now, reinet K brings up Cal. So Cal, so we can bring it up. We just can't bring it up transparently using the letter K. Unless, let me try something else. Yes, you can. If K stands for Cal, you can put the transparent, um, yeah, you can put the apostrophe before the alias and it comes up as a transparent command. That I didn't know. I think that's kind of nice. Not that it saves you that many things, but if you're saying I want to go and offset apostrophe K instead of apostrophe C-A-L, allows you to say, you know, what's 1.255 or 445 divided by 2, and then it comes up and you can offset that. You can divide by whatever. So that gives you an idea of how you can do the aliases. And again, the aliases can be any number of characters you want. Uh, there is one more thing I wanted to take a look at, and that's in your textbook somewhere. Yeah, right here. There's a sidebar right here. There's a sidebar about alias edit, which we looked at earlier. There's a sidebar here um, because if you're writing a, a list program, if later on we're going to be doing lists, but if you're going to write a list program and in that program you want to reinitialize the ACAD PGP file, since reinit brings up a dialog box and you can see it over here, you can't use reinit in an auto list file. Now, I wanted to do that one time, and so I had to figure out how to do it from list without a dialog box. And the way you do it is there's a variable, re-init, put in quotes, set it for 16, and that will reinitialize the ACAD PGP file. And that is the only value, that actually are other values you can assign to reinit, but again, reinit as a function, if you look over here, um, it was at one time used, if you had a digitizer, a digitizer was either a relatively small or quite large device for inputting commands into AutoCAD, and it would allow you to put a sheet of paper down and select points on the sheet of paper, the idea being if you wanted to take an existing drawing that was done by hand, put it down and then digitize it by selecting the individual um, endpoints of lines, etc., that would make it easier for you to put that um, piece of paper into the software. Now we have scanners that are large enough to be able to scan up to three feet by four feet. That means you can then bring that file in um, digitally. You don't have to go through and hand digitize. So they're literally, and digitized were a really big deal. One time when you bought a computer um, set up in AutoCAD, you came with a digitizer that was 12 inches by 12 inches that you could put a sheet of paper down on. And all the commands were selected with a puck around the outside. In the middle, it had a small area for, the, for the, uh, the screen that represented the screen that had an absolute pointing device. And I've been looking ever since <laughs> for somebody to just make a small little absolute pointing device to replace the mouse altogether. So if you put the puck down in a certain spot, it's going to show up on that spot on your screen. No one is now making that that I know of. So if you take a look, this is kind of legacy as well. If you were using a digitizer, you sometimes would have to reinitialize the port that was being assigned to that digitizer, and then sometimes you have to reinitialize the digitizer itself. There's literally only one thing anymore, but at one time there were more than even more than that. So the value 16 is a bit fat flag value, um, and so at one time there was a value of 1, 2, 4, 8, or 16. 16 is the only one that matters anymore. So if you were writing a list program, and I'm just saying this in case down the road you were thinking, gee, I want to have a setup that automatically allows me to add something to the PGP file and then reinitialize it, that's what you'd have to do. Not very likely, but all right, that's it on the um, external commands and alias.